Okay, we're back uh, with RC circuits, and this one will just be a brief little how-to. Uh, do a circuit where you have a resistor and a capacitor in parallel with each other. Now, at first sight, so a circuit like this looks kind of intimidating, and if you were to actually try to math, it would be intimidating. It, it's pretty tough. Uh, so fortunately, we won't have any big derivations like we would for series circuits when we have capacitors and resistors. Um, instead, as far as details go, we only look at two times, right when you close the switch and then after the, the famous or infamous um, long time when things were running. And um, the other thing I've highlighted here is, is really the key to this is just remember what parallel means. Um, in this case, resistor 2 and this capacitor always have to have the same voltage, okay, at all times, the same instantaneous voltage. So basically what happens is when you close the switch, think about the, the initial voltage on the capacitor. It's zero. There's no charge there yet. Okay, it started off uncharged. So if the voltage on the capacitor is zero, that means the initial voltage across the resistor 2 is also zero. What that means is whatever the voltage of your battery is, say 10 volts, um, all of that voltage ends up on R1, okay? Because remember, the, the voltage of R1 plus the voltage of R2 or the capacitor, since, since those are in the same, uh, since they're in parallel, has to be equal to the voltage of the battery. So if the voltage on resistor 2 and the capacitor are zero, then all of the voltage goes to R1, at least at that one instant. Okay, so what we can conclude is that at that moment, when all of the voltage is across R1, the initial current following Ohm's law is just the voltage of the battery divided by R1. And that's it. Okay, but now, it's, as time goes on, we know that the capacitor is going to start to charge up. Okay, let me erase some of this. So as you start to build up some charge on the capacitor, you start to get some voltage across the capacitor. And at any given instant, once again, whatever that voltage is has to be the voltage across R2. Now after a long time, um, Let me jot that down here. Uh, capacitors kill current. Okay, they, they reach some maximum voltage, they negate what the battery is trying to do, and effectively, that part of the circuit is going to be dead. Okay, so after a long time, your current is going to be the voltage divided by R1 plus R2. It's as if those two resistors are in series since nothing can happen with the, the capacitor anymore. Okay, so conceptually that's what's going on here. Um, it's interesting if, if you were to actually go ahead and um, open, up the circ or open up the switch again, as in disconnecting the battery, then that capacitor is going to discharge through R2. So, uh, in the end, um, this is really what goes on. Uh, we have these two different currents. If we were to plot the current of the circuit as a function of time, uh, it's going to start big, V over R1, and then it's eventually going to decrease, not to zero, but to this steady smaller current of the battery divided by the total resistance, R1 plus R2. Okay. Um, yeah, and as far as calculations goes, there's, there's really not a whole lot more we have to do with this. Um, we'll do some things in class, but I just wanted to get something on here uh, with the, the nuts and bolts of this type of circuit. I hope it helps, and until next time, we'll see you later.